Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. I keep hearing about debate, but if you're going to have a real, sincere, honest debate, the first thing it requires is an open mind. My first question is, are we there? If we're there, then I've got to ask some questions. Why in the world are we going to do this? Why did we get here? We've heard that this is about increasing jobs. I don't think you're going to find a single person in this chamber out in the hallway that's going to turn down that offer if it really results in that. But the truth is, if we really want to be honest about it, any study paid for by the proponents, frankly, you might as well throw it in the trash can because it's going to serve that bias. And if we're being fair, any study that's paid for and done by the proponents is just as useless. So if we're really going to get good hard data that means a daggone thing, the first condition is we better be looking at data that came from someone that didn't have a dog in the fight. We've got three universities in the state of Indiana, and I don't know where, why we need to go anywhere else. Indiana University says, doesn't create a single job. Notre Dame University, doesn't create a single job. And we found out in the last three weeks, Ball State University says, doesn't create a single job, not one. I'll say this, even if with that data, any, even with the data that I don't think any reasonable person can't pay strict attention to and can't give a whole lot of, of, of mindfulness to, we had a chance to put up or shut up. We had an amendment that says, if you think, it, you know, we keep here, and I heard today, it's going to increase, we lose one-third, automatically lose one-third of our contacts. They don't even give us a sniff. They're not going to look at us because we're not right to work. But we had an amendment on the floor that says, we're going to give this right to work some time. We're going to give you a few years to let it sift out. And it's put up and shut up. If we go ahead and at the end of the day, it's really going to create jobs, then let's show it. But if it doesn't, let's grandfather this out. If it's really about creating jobs, that was the moment. What happened to that moment? Defeated. Defeated. If you look, one of the top things, and I even heard it said today by Representative Tor, one of the top reasons that people want to come is because you've got an educated workforce. Last year, I had a, a, a tax credit for businesses that would pay to have their employees go to education, and it was defeated. Party line. I filed the bill this year, not heard. We've had lots of opportunities. We've had lots of things that we could do that we could work together that really does have a track record that has some proof that really creates jobs, not with junk science and not with biased studies, but at the end of the day really creates jobs, and we've passed those over. A chance that we could come together, but instead we, we pull apart. We heard the issue that it won't lower wages. 22 right-to-work states. We can't deny 17 of the 25 lowest states are right-to-work states. Let's do this another way. Out of the top 25, only five are right-to-work states. Five out of 25. As I sit through the summer study committee, I've never seen so much skewed and ridiculous data in my, in my whole life. I'm not an economist. I was a math major, but I'm not a mathematician. I am a mathematician, but I'm, a, I'm not a statistics guy anyway. But I will tell you right now, we're looking at things where we pick, uh, you talk about picking states, we pick a state like the, the Dakotas that find oil reserves that magically create jobs that had nothing to do with the right to work. But we let that data and we pull it in and we skew and we create a result that we want. I will say this right now. The state of Indiana sits our per capita wage at 86% of the nation. I will say this, and I'm going to close. I don't play the lottery. 
I don't question somebody that wants to. That's a personal decision. But I know with enough math that I've got a better chance of getting hit by lightning, not once, but twice, than to win the lottery. I don't think that's a gamble. I think that's just called giving away money. And if I am going to make a gamble, I want to make sure that at least I have, maybe not a sure thing, but at least I've got odds in my favor. I'm telling you, folks, we're making a gamble here. And we're making a gamble where we could have put some things in that controlled the odds. We had an amendment, again, that talked about to keep right to work, you better increase jobs. To keep right to work, you better increase the per capita income. We had some things that increased the odds and gave some safety nets and gave some assurances that we were going to follow through on our promise. Did we accept any of those? Uh-uh. If you didn't hear a daggone thing that I said today, hear this clearly. We are gambling with the lives of every single person in this room. We are gambling with the lives of every single person sitting out that hallway. We're gambling with the lives of my three grandsons. I'm just telling you, we have no good odds here. This is a gamble. And I would say without a referendum, without the people's input, this is too important to take that kind of high-risk, high-stakes gamble. Please, please defeat this bill.